as we live life, isn't it funny how if you have eyes of faith, you see God move, and if you are superstitious, you say, what a coincidence. Um, but as uh, these songs came together, uh, so much uh, I'm thinking as I'm hearing the songs, goodness gracious, um, the Holy Spirit knew um, as we speak of uh, redeemed here in the end of our message, we're going to speak on that. So um, isn't it exciting uh, to be a Christian, uh, to be saved, uh, to be uh, on our way to heaven? And uh, if you're not a Christian, um, if you have uh, needing faith, um, I believe it would be a scary place to be um, by God's design. Uh, so today, uh, we're going to have an interesting and unusual message. Um, uh, the, the title is uh, Examine Yourself. Examine Yourself. Uh, and it starts with a little bit of, of, of worldliness. Uh, but in 1978, uh, Peter Townsend wrote a song. Uh, and can anyone tell me possibly two of these things? I bet my brother may know. Uh, the, the, the group, uh, and possibly even to take a stab at the song. Does anyone know Peter Townsend in 1978? The Who. Uh, there you go. The Who. Uh, and uh, kind of fitting with the name of the group, what was the title of the song? Who Are You? Are you? Wow. That's awesome. I don't know if you should be praising the Lord about that or not. <laughs> but uh, Peter Townsend wrote a song, uh, The Who, uh, Who Are You? In 1978, and if you, uh, depending on what you read uh, in regard to that song, uh, who was he talking about? Uh, it might have been uh, the policeman that found him passed out drunk uh, in, in that random doorway in Soho, England. Um, he said in one article that it was, uh, he was venting uh, about his manager. He was angry, and another thought uh, is as far as this, a spiritual thought that he was having within himself uh, that might have been brought on by his spiritual guru. Uh, but an, any of these thoughts uh, are somewhat irrelevant, but they are truly varied depending on what you read. But today, uh, if I were to ask you, who are you? Um, that's the thought of the message. Who, who, who are you? can't do that very well, but if I were to ask a, a close friend of yours, uh, they would say, oh, uh, here's who this person is. If I were to ask uh, someone that knows you casually, uh, they even uh, would have, a, you know, the delivery guy that drops that off uh, in your office or at your house, believe it or not, has probably formed, if they've interacted, have formed some level of opinion about you. Um, I, I know a, a man that hires a lot of people, uh, and he said that he forms an opinion uh, in less than a minute, we as we travel, as we go, um, we're we're uh, we're uh, putting out uh, something of ourselves. And so today, I want us to consider carefully um, what are we putting out, and is it pleasing uh, to the Lord? Uh, in in First Timothy. Uh, Chapter 4, verse 16. Um, I was shocked at how many scriptures there are about self-awareness. Um, I thought uh, it was on my heart to preach this. Um, and uh, it should be on the screen, too. If you get frustrated by the... We've got uh, in the works a uh, replacement for those pew Bibles. Um, but it will be on the screen. Uh, if you don't get frustrated and like to turn, uh, do turn uh, to First Timothy Chapter 4, verse 16. It says, Take heed unto thyself and unto thy, the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Uh, take heed unto thyself and to the, the doctrine. And Paul, as he wrote this to young pastor Timothy, uh, was not telling him uh, to take heed to his doctrine uh, and to his, his um, self to be saved, uh, eternally saved, but that if 
Timothy, I need to, you to make sure that the things that you teach and your life agree with each other. And he says, and in doing this, you're going to save yourself. And, and that word save means to protect and to deliver. And if, uh, if my life and my uh, spiritual uh, convictions do not agree, um, it's going to cause trouble. It's going to rob my life uh, of, of fruit that comes by living in grace. As we leave grace, as we leave obedience, uh, and as I'm on my own, uh, now I'm trying to produce something that I can't. And he says to be careful, Timothy, that there's agreement uh, between the two. Uh, and he says there, uh, save thyself and them that hear thee. Uh, if you think of it, imagine uh, Lot as God uh, says to Lot, I'm going to destroy your, I don't know if he lived in Sodom and Gomorrah, one of you might help me later. Uh, I don't know which he, but I'm going to destroy. And he, uh, he goes to his sons-in-laws and he says, listen, boys, young men, God spoke to me uh, and he told me. And I don't know if he got any further than that because I believe there were areas of, of Lot's life that when he said, I'm carrying a message of God, his sons-in-law says, are you kidding? And, and they died in, in that, uh, it would have been something to see. Uh, fire and brimstone falling from heaven. Uh, we need to be careful uh, that there's agreement uh, with uh, what is, is in our heart uh, and what is seen by the world. We need to pay uh, close attention. And today, as we, uh, uh, as we examine ourselves, what I mean is really the visible. I'm not uh, uh, thinking that, that um, and actually you might say praise the Lord, I'm not trying to hit on your besetting sin today. Uh, I'm trying to say, let there be agreement uh, with those of you that love the Lord in your heart. I love God. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe there was a cross. Um, it, uh, my heart is his. But sometimes in, our, in that conviction and in the way we live uh, on Monday morning or Friday night, there's just such a massive disconnect between that conviction of love for God uh, and the choices uh, that we make. And so I'm striving today, as I've, I've examined myself this week, to cause you uh, to just pause and say, hmm, that's, that's maybe not me some work. Let's pray. Lord God, as we uh, venture down this road, Lord, of self-examination uh, and self-awareness, I pray that you'd help me to be careful uh, not to offend, Lord, and those in the, in the uh, pews, Lord, to be careful uh, not to think of another. Lord, but help us to carefully hear and carefully consider uh, what your Holy Spirit and what your word uh, will bring to the surface today. And Lord, might we offer it to you uh, as a sacrifice and say, Lord, take this and might it be more like you. We pray for your blessing uh, on your word. In Jesus' name, amen. In Proverbs 23, we're going to have several verses from Proverbs. So you might stick a finger there. In Proverbs 23, I've chosen this verse on purpose. It's very unusual to me. Um, it's not, it's, it's, it's actually a verse that's asking us to address the surface. Almost all the verses that I could imagine, as I've read, are addressing an underlying, underlaying working of God. There's spiritual things going on within and that are reflected uh, without. But in this verse, uh, let's read it and, and you'll see its uniqueness. Some, many of you have read it uh, many times as you read Proverbs. But Proverbs 23, verse 1 and 2 read, uh, When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Um, and it's so unusual to, to have a verse uh, encouraging us 
to, not to be hypocritical, but to say, listen, you've been invited to eat with a dignitary. And, uh, and some of you wonder why I never eat downstairs. It's probably because I eat like a slob. Um, uh, you'll never see me eat. And honestly, it's because I'd like to talk with you more than eat. But in the verse, they're saying, uh, consider diligently what is before you. And he's not speaking of the food. He's talking about the audience. He says, have you, have you been invited to this uh, dignified event with these uh, people of influence? He says, if you're a person of appetite, uh, of uh, uh, almost gluttony, but he doesn't say that. He's not saying it's sin. He's saying, be careful. And he actually says, put a knife to your throat uh, to try and get a grip uh, on this thing that, that is troubling you and, and not reflecting well uh, on you. But a very odd verse. It's saying, uh, I want you to change what you present to people for a reason, for, for, to allow influence. In Proverbs uh, 22, uh, Proverbs 22, verse 1, It says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather uh, than silver or gold. Uh, it says a good name is to be cho- chosen. We need to make uh, choices today. Uh, how will I be thought of uh, to that delivery guy? You say, well, I'm a busy person. Uh, I don't have time to be polite to the person dropping off, whatever. Yes, you do. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, you name the nationality. I'm so-and-so, so that's just how, you know, that's just how we roll. Uh, you know, we, we need to be careful uh, of, of things that, we, uh, that are presented, things that reflect out. Uh, a good name is to be chosen. How will you be remembered? I remember uh, my grandfather, uh, he always seemed to take time uh, to listen. He, he cared. Um, you could tell. He was actually a, a gentleman, but you, you knew there was a strength there. There was things that we sum up and remember, and they're reflected out. Uh, and they allow you uh, influence, or they rob you uh, of influence. I don't know uh, if anyone else other than me has ever tried this. <clears throat> Have you ever tried to smell your own breath? <clears throat> There's different tactics. I've, I've come across these. I might patent them. Uh, there's, the, uh, the, there's the blow out and run into it, you know, <laughs> trying to catch up with it. And if you can, it must be really bad. Uh, there, you, you, you can get it to t- try and funnel it directly back into your nose. <sighs> um, or try and breathe against uh, some glass or something. And, and honestly, in all of these uh, attempts, I don't know if any of them work. It's hard to smell your own breath. Uh, and I don't want to be crass or, or, or anything today. Um, but in, in this self-examination, um, I think it might be hard. Uh, you know, you, you meet that person and you're like, how are they not seeing what the world sees? And then they merely they go along. Uh, and, and it needs to be a pause uh, uh, and, a, and a check uh, of not really my heart. My heart belongs to God. But the check is what is the world seeing? It was um, 20 years ago when I discovered, not on my own, uh, but through the help of loved ones, uh, that I'm actually high maintenance. <laughs> I, was, I was loving life. Uh, I'm just like, I am Mr. Easygoing. Uh, there is not a person in the world further laid back than me. And somehow this came out uh, with my electrician friend, and he was there, and it, and it came out. I'm, I'm really easygoing. I think he used a bad word. Uh, he said, are you kidding me? Uh, and my wife was in earshot of the whole story. He was working in, in our house. And I said, honey, help me out here. She said, are you kidding me? <laughs> I, I'm, I didn't, had no idea. Uh, but, I'm, but I'm high maintenance. If you're brave enough, uh, and you would, and, and be prepared 
uh, ask somebody that knows you. Uh, something in today's message might spark a thought. Um, ask somebody you trust and you know, and be prepared. Uh, don't get mad at the person that, you know, uh, you know, do these jeans make my, you know, look. Mm, uh, <laughs> if you get the answer, <laughs> you know, be careful what you ask, and then I guess be careful how you answer. Uh, but there, there needs to be a, a, a check. Um, God wants to reveal some things in our life, I believe. Take a look at James. Uh, James chapter 1. In James chapter 1, we're presented with <coughs> a choice uh, after we hear uh, the prognosis. James chapter 1, verse 23 uh, to 25. It says, if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself and goes, goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed. Uh, in his deed. And so today, just as the, the forgetful uh, hearer of God's word, he's taken a look, he's given a self-exam. Uh, he's looked, he's seen the speck of dirt, and he just has gone his way, <clears throat> and he's forgotten it. Uh, so today, as you see whatever you see, and there's been uh, something revealed, uh, make an adjustment. Back over in Proverbs 14, verse 8. It says, the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the fool, but the folly of fools is deceit. Turn with me also to Second Peter chapter one, verse three. The scripture is filled. <clears throat> filled with things that encourage us to examine ourselves. In 2 Peter 1, verse 3, it says, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and to virtue. And so uh, they, they, they make a separation here uh, in this verse, of our life and of our godliness, uh, saying that God cares about both. But in this verse, they're saying that God has given us everything we need so that there's agreement between our life and our godliness. And in this word pertain, there was a, a word uh, to superimpose. And it, it, I had to actually look that up. I thought I knew what it meant, and, and I got it right. But to superimpose means to take two objects and to lay one uh, over the other. And as, as our lives that we live on Monday through, through Sunday morning and, and our godliness are superimposed upon each other, uh, is, is it fitting? And is there agreement? Or, or, or is there something that, that doesn't uh, work, that's, that's not right? Uh, so in the, uh, in the thought of uh, trying to s smell my own breath, um, I wanted to list, and I, I want to be careful. Uh, I have not thought, uh, uh, I actually did think of one person during when I was listening this. So I want to speak the truth from the pulpit. But it probably wasn't you. Uh, I've made a list of, uh, of things that we need to be aware of. And honestly, uh, of all of these things, there was one or two that I'm like, no, I don't really have a problem with this. But if I were to be honest, at some point in my life, there's been a time when, when uh, I've had trouble, really, with the list, uh, the whole list. So be patient with me, uh, no particular order, and um, see if God puts his finger on a button today and say, you know what? Mm. Uh, so top of the list, because I think it's the one I really try to work on a lot, um, is talking too much. 
if we were to come into a conversation together, um, and we, uh, I'll try not to talk too much today, um, but if we were to come into a conversation, Brian and I were talking, and we're talking about whatever, uh, how's it going at work, this and that, I would challenge you this, as we part ways, you know how your phone or your, some of your bills maybe show you a, a pie chart, a graph of percentages? What percentage on the graph was I speaking? What, and, and some people, it could literally be zero. We've met, some cork has been unplugged, uh, and it's just flowing. And then at the end of it, so assess yourself, and actually assess while you're speaking. Uh, we have eyes for a reason. Goodness gracious, if I'm talking to Brian, and Brian has checked his watch three times <laughs> and yawned twice and th taken several steps this way, <laughs> then goodness gracious, shut it down. Uh, if I've got four or five of you sleeping, I'm going to shut it down. I don't know if it was a late night Saturday night, but obviously there's been a loss of interest. Shut it down. Be self-aware. If you, so uh, when you meet, as you part, make a pie chart and say, uh, gee, I was right around the 50% mark, and that's what I'd like to shoot for, or maybe be lower. I listened more than I spoke. Uh, that would be good. Do you talk over someone? Uh, and again, again this, is a, this is a hard one. I was uh, on a hunting trip with my brother-in-law. Um, we were up in Canada, and I don't know if they're more remote uh, in Canada, but our guide went to use the bathroom, and uh, w as soon as he left, Leon's from upstate, uh, and he's a little bit slower, and, and he's more laid back, and in, in my mind, if three quarters of the way through your sentence, I know, I think I know where you're heading, goodness gracious, the last quarter of that sentence is, I, I know where you're heading, come on, and, and I'm, I'm that way, and I'm tempted to just say, yeah, I know, and this is my precious thought that I need to get in, and if I interrupt you, I'm guaranteed to get my thought in, and honestly, my thought was more important than yours, it, it is what we're saying when, when this is happening. And, he, and the guide left, he used the bathroom, and he said, David, you're interrupting every sentence that this poor man, and I'm like, wow, you're right, and I was convicted. Uh, and so talking too much, uh, and, and letting someone finish your sentence and listen to the sentence. Don't be thinking in your head, uh, let, me, let me wait for that pause. My precious thought has to gonna change the world uh, when I share this thought. Um, let them finish your sentence. Uh, are you conceited? Uh, or is there, are you consistently late? Uh, I knew a person uh, that uh, in the, a school situation, they said, listen, ma'am, uh, if your son is going to be held back a grade uh, if you can't get here on time. It's been how many times? If it happens uh, one or two more times, he's going to be held back. And I don't really know the solution, how that went, but I believe it didn't go well. Um, they could not get somewhere on time. And it's important. If we start at 10.30, uh, and your goal is to be here at 10.30, and, and I do, I like to try and start on time. Um, that means if you're, if you're plunking down while I'm starting, there's, it's too close. Uh, so be careful uh, on time. Uh, do you um, self-condemn? Do you lie? Um, we have to be patient. Patient with people. Patient in work. Patient in traffic. Uh, we need to be patient, people. Uh, is there an anger uh, problem? In the article I looked at in regard to anger, uh, had anger slash resentment. There seems to be a link between I'm an angry person and I'm resenting. Uh, are you angry? Are you fearful? Uh, negative. Uh, my wife's pet peeve is, is complainers and negative. Uh, she's just, and, I, and actually, uh, she gives me that look if I start to be negative or complaining. Uh, she hates it. But it's not very encouraging to be around a negative or a complaining person. Uh, foolish speaking gossip. Uh, are you perfectionist or are you sloppy? 
Are you uh, intolerant uh, or are you not willing to make a stand? Do you have hate uh, in what you project, uh, prejudice, laziness? Uh, are you self-centered? And I'm so glad we got through that list because I didn't really want to make a list like that. Uh, but I was afraid. I, like, I really want us to be self-examining today and consider. Uh, I thought I would make it fun. I thought I would make, there were 17 items on that list. I thought I would make a bingo card and give it to each of you. And so, <laughs> bingo! <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got a whole line of them. Um, but uh, I'm glad to be through it. In Romans uh, chapter 12, uh, we're going to read verses 2 and 3. Romans 12, verse 2 and 3. It says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, uh, through grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, uh, not to consider, not to think of himself more highly uh, than he ought to think, but to think soberly, uh, according as God hath dealt uh, to every man a measure of faith. Uh, and so God wants us to change and to make changes uh, as he's going to give gr- grace, but soberly, he wants us to diligently consider, not a casual look uh, of our lives and what we're projecting. Uh, Mary and Martha. When I say the name Martha, many of you will will remember something about Martha. Uh, Jesus said to Martha, uh, Martha, Martha, uh, you are careful and uh, anxious and troubled about much. Um, Don't self-justify today. Allow your lives to come into the light of the Scripture uh, and allow God's Word uh, and God's character uh, to be the measure not all of society interrupts everybody says if i don't interrupt i'm not going to get anything out no uh, let our standards line up with what will be pleasing to god and let him be the measure uh, just as as you know martha probably came to jesus saying look my sister's sitting she's doing nothing and i think she was waiting she was trying to self-justify and get jesus to justify her and jesus says no uh, Martha, Mary has chosen uh, the good part. Um, so we need to be, let our life line up with the word of God. Uh, what's uh, what's the, the point of the message? Um, if I were to tie up, I've actually preached one message, I think was 25 minutes, and I think one of them was like 49 uh, on the high side. Um, I actually, look, I care. If I were to tie up, let's say today, uh, 35, 40 minutes of your time, you'd expect me to have a point, wouldn't you? If I tie up 40 minutes and at minute 39, you're like, oh, please, dear Lord, let there be a point to this. Uh, I've missed it, right? Imagine if, how old are you and put those uh, 57. If I've lived 57 years uh, and, and I've missed the point, that's way worse than a half hour of your time. Live life pointedly, pointedly. I want my life to reflect uh, the goodness of God uh, and who he is. And so as P. Uh, Townsend uh, poised that question, who are you? Um, there's even a harder question that we're really not going to get into today, um, but the verse following um, touches both of these things. If, who are you if you got to that answer? Um, you might be followed by another one. Who cares? Who cares? I'm the president. Who cares? Honestly. Um, and I don't say that just because the bar might be set low. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying there's, there's bigger things. Uh, it's God that matters. Uh, in Colossians uh, chapter 1. You guys have no idea. Uh, I can't find Colossians. (laughs) Uh, You think, uh, Brian, you should have screened me better. Uh, Can you find Colossians? (laughs) 
before you gave me the, the pastor appreciation card, you should have checked. Uh, can you find Colossians? Uh, Colossians 1, verse 13 to 16. It says, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created uh, that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things uh, are all things were created by him and for him. As Jesus Christ uh, is our creator uh, and, and God is here, uh, Christ is in God's image. Uh, God has asked us to be in the image of God, in, in the image of Christ. It's, it's the creator, the designer that sets um, who are you and why are you. Anything outside of that uh, as we're seeing in today's society, as the created tries to define who and what and why I am, there comes confusion. But if, if our lives line up with the word of God and as Christ was in God's image, we are intended to be in Christ's image, in God's image. There's been a full circle and redemption and the work of redemption has, has restored and brought back all the way to Genesis 1.26, where God says, let us make man uh, in our image. And the restoration that's come about needs to reflect in our life. And listen, uh, in my life, not yours, in my life, I need work. There's things in my nature that fight against the agreement with what's in my heart and God's image to what's seen uh, in, the, in the business world uh, and in, in, as they interact with my wife and my loved ones. And there, there might be something uh, in your life as well. Uh, have you been translated, uh, as he said here? Translated uh, means you've been carried, that uh, you've been uh, deposited uh, somewhere else above where you started. I've been placed in Christ. Now let's let my life uh, agree uh, with that thought. We need to grow in the image of God. Uh, in 2 Corinthians, verse chapter 13, verse 5. <clears throat> it says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. <clears throat> As we look at ourselves and it's begin to uh, examine ourselves, it begins with um, really not who are you, but whose are you. Uh, I belong to God. I belong to God through Jesus Christ. There was a time when I understood uh, through the word of God, that I was sinful, not just in my actions, but in my nature. That Jesus Christ, uh, because of the love of God and because of his love for us, died on a cross. And I took and I gave <coughs> my sins to Jesus Christ, and he made me clean. Wouldn't it be a silly thing, and Romans 5 addresses this thought, um, wouldn't it be a silly thing if I gave him my sins and held on to my life. That's, that makes no sense. I trust you with the, to cover the sin, but I think I've got my life and can run it better than you can. I gave it all uh, there at the cross. We need to give it all to examine yourselves. It begins at salvation. And that word reprobate uh, there at the end, uh, unless you fail the test, as I examine, there never has been a time when I've given myself Really, and honestly, I believe this. <clears throat> if, if at some point some preacher preached and you were convicted that there is a God, there is a hell, <clears throat> there is a heaven, and I, I take my sin, I believe if that's all you gave to the Lord, I would question your salvation. Well, I don't think it works that way. Um, you know, in a sense, you're saying, clean up this mess, God, but leave my life alone. 
as we give our life to the Lord, we should make changes. Um, who are you today? Uh, as we consider the question, I want you to understand that there, I fully believe that there's two, um, two forces at work, maybe more, if you consider the Holy Spirit and the Word a separate force other than God. Uh, but Satan really doesn't want you asking the question. And if you ask the question, he really doesn't want you to really consider. Uh, I think Satan's, uh, that liar and the deceiver, primarily those are the words I think of when I think of Satan, wants you to lie and to deceive uh, your own self as you examine who you are. I think for the lost, and not across the board, I think there's exceptions to this rule, but I think for the lost, Satan wants the lost, those that are outside of Christ, to overvalue uh, themselves and say, I, I, in my own self, am so priceless that I don't need anyone else. <clears throat> but to the saved, I think he wants, now that you're saved and now that you're purchased and, and blood-bought, I think he wants you to undervalue yourself and to say, uh, I'm worthless to not just, I'm worthless as a person and I'm worthless to God. Uh, and so that, that, consider even these things as you examine and do examine carefully as we close. I want to uh, close with the thought of uh, who God thinks you are, as I see in the Bible. You are a child of God, redeemed through God's love for you and by the blood of the Savior. You have a purpose uh, to reflect His goodness and beauty uh, as I live life and give Him glory. And right now, as you live life in a fallen world and in a flawed body, a God feels your suffering. And as I wrote that last line, uh, God feels your suffering, I believed that He did. But I thought, it's such a strange thought. God in heaven uh, and so many people, <clears throat> does He really feel my suffering like that? Uh, does, he, does He know as I feel worthless? Or does He know uh, as I struggle with this or that? Does He feel it? And we mentioned Martha earlier in the sermon. <coughs> and um, if you remember, Jesus wept uh, when He came and found um, Mary and Martha and those that were mourning. Uh, he felt their pain. Jesus wept. As Jesus looked over uh, Israel in the triumphal entry there, as he saw that, that city and all of those souls, uh, he wept over that city. Uh, and there was a tremendous uh, passage in Hebrews uh, that really reflects uh, that God uh, does feel your suffering. He, he feels uh, what you feel. In Hebrews 4, verse 15, it says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And Jesus Christ feels uh, your pain, and he loves you. And lastly, you are eternally loved uh, and will spend eternity with that one that loves you and dies for you. These thoughts uh, and others should define you. Who are you? I'm a child of God. I'm blood-bought. I'm heaven-bound. I'd like to close with a, a verse from Psalm, Psalm 139. It says, verse 23 and 24, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. That person that you ask to um, help you uh, consider um, your life and what's projected out of it, let it be the Lord as well as maybe another. In your prayer time, uh, often, Ask God, uh, God, is this me? Uh, am I that one that? Um, and allow him uh, to make the changes. I hope that uh, you haven't, uh, I, something's come to mind that no one's been offended 
um, and that you'll consider and that you'll examine. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, thank you for your word, Lord, as it reflects into our life, Lord, let your goodness and your glory reflect out, Lord, as changes are made. Today, Lord, I pray that there would be no a hypocrite here among us, Lord. Uh, and what I mean by that is we've said that we're yours. We said that you've, uh, your, your cross and your love has made a difference. And Lord, let us not be hypocrites uh, as we lead a life uh, different than that. I know, Lord, I need areas of work. Forgive me when I fall short. Lord, help me to, uh, to dust myself off as you pick me up uh, and to continue on uh, and to, to point to you and bring glory to your precious name. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen.